dropping in on a big wave can be one of the biggest adrenaline rushes in surfing when it's done right. I'm Brad Jacobs. For the past 15 years plus, I've filmed surfers of every level from the top pros to the first day beginners. I've gained an excessive knowledge of what the top surfers do right and I'm sharing it with you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay updated with this series. For this episode, I'm gonna cover a more advanced topic, dropping in on big waves. Most people surf for the pure rush that gliding on a wave gives them. Surfing big waves basically redlines that rush. I'm gonna start by cleaning things up first. Don't rush into big wave surfing. Glad I'm going to Hawaii to surf the big waves in North Shore. It will not go well. But surfing big waves can have big consequences and you really need to build your board knowledge, wave knowledge, and confidence. All right, let's flip through some clips to see what these surfers are doing right and wrong. All right, let's kick it off with one of my favorite examples is right here. Look at that, and this is a monster of a wave. Look at that too, Arr, I love that. I mean, that's just, big wave riders are a different beast. There's nothing else in life that's, that's, that gives them this much adrenaline rush and this much thrill, but let's go back to the wave here. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is push the board down. You want the nose facing at an angle down instead of straight out. Look at all these people getting the heck out of here. This guy's photographer, he's like, I'm hanging out for the shot. Now, notice he's under the lip. Once you're ready to go, go. Commit yourself to go. As he's getting the board down, first off, he's looking straight down. He's looking where he's going. That's very, very important. At this point, the, the most intelligent thing you can do is get as far back on that tail. You do not want to dig that nose, and that's exactly what he does. See how far back he's leaning? So the nose of the board is lifting up. He's getting out of there. He puts so much weight on the back of that that his front, his, his heel is actually off the board. As he's coming down, he lands back on his board. Still got his weight in the back. And now, look at that. Now he safely conquered this crazy crazy wave. I always love finding people in the waves look at all these guys whoa <laughs> it's one of the great things about being out in the lineup is watching other guys take off on some absolute bombs so this was a great way to go got in early gets up immediately I didn't mention that see how fast he goes from laying down to getting those feet up on that board realizes right here that he's got a little bit of weight push everything back and down the face you go successfully Ah, this one is my buddy Connor Beatty. Let's just go ahead and roll this thing first so you can see what happens. Well, style points for that ending. We're not gonna go into how to ride a barrel and, and how to remain calm. I mean, he does a heck of a job here. We're gonna back this thing up. He gives it like a two stroke start. Uh, immediately he's getting up, right? But he's automatically jumping to his feet. He's up high. Now something really cool is getting ready to happen. I mean, look at this. The entire bottom of this wave is vertical. He's obviously got all his weight in the back over here. He is leaning forward and a little bit off to the side. You're gonna see this a lot. So as he's leading this way, he knows he needs to go down the line, but this thing is vertical. That's not an easy spin right there, right? The amazing thing that he does here is the way he puts all that weight in that back foot, turns the entire board. He wants to get it going down the line, still has all that weight. Once he gets that tail and he knows that he's okay on the nose, and now you see he kind of starts to push that weight down on that front foot. And boom, that's where he's gonna get more speed. Once he pushes the fr that front foot back down, takes a little bit of the pressure off the top. There you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you these in a side-by-side -side format. Because you're gonna see, first off, how much lower Connor is on the wave as they're starting to push up, right? They both have the hand placement the same. The biggest difference is that Connor is pushing, obviously, the board in front of him and he's laying the nose down. Instead of over here, like Easton, he has that nose straight out. He's also looking in this direction because he wants to get down the line. These, are, these were shot the same day, very similar waves. As they go forward, 
His board is staying straight down now. He's leaning down the line. Easton's getting hung up because he never dropped his board down. He automatically has all his weight to the back. Not a good spot you want to be in there, Easton. As we go forward a little bit more, they're both now at the vertical section of the wave. Now Easton is starting to get his board down, but he's still way, he still, his head's even with the top of the wave where Connor has a couple feet above him. So as we go forward there, you're going to see Easton do a little bit of air. You see how much air he caught on that? He stalled at the lip, stayed on the tail because it started going vert and he didn't want to dig the nose. But now he's just in a bad, he's in a bad predicament where over here, Connor, Connor's already down. He's already looking. He's already getting speed. You see now, boom, Easton's nose is fully dug in. He's already down on this wave set at the barrel. Easton now is at a dead standstill and... Boom, you can see that coming. He is now on his back. And the lip of that wave is coming right for his head. And, and remember, you don't always have to go. So look at this. He's looking down the line right after bat. Sees this thing is gonna jack up and just stays away. I mean, look how smart that is. There's nothing good that would have come from going on that wave. Lays the board down and drops in. This thing gets crazy gnarly. Look at this wave. We're obviously not going to go into dissecting that, but oh, that is brutal. Let's go back and see what he did right. So the important thing to watch here is both these hands are pushing the board down. Right now, it's, it's going straight. That's a bad thing, but watch how he gets it straight down. He's under the lip, so he got himself. Look at this boogie boarder back here jumping the wave. That's kind of cool. This guy's got a great view. Anyway, back to what we're talking about here. Let my ADD fly. And watch how he gets that board down. His weight is still back, although he's got a little bit towards the front because he's going to use it for speed. And then right around here, he's going to use this back foot to basically steer himself. Look at this guy. This guy's like, please don't run me over. Please don't run me over. All right, here's a good example of a couple of things, obviously. Uh, getting out of the way when you know you're in trouble is, you know, your number one thing. I've mentioned a couple times, see how his nose is facing straight. You don't want the nose to face straight. You want the nose to go down. The reason being is as it's facing straight, you're going to get this water pushing up on the board, slowing you down. What's that going to do? That's going to hang you up in the lip, a spot you don't want to be in. Once he realizes he's up in the lip, he really doesn't even. He's up for like a second and he gets out of there. And why does he jump? Because he's much, believe it or not, much safer jumping off, landing straight like that, trying to get under the wave, than he is actually trying to ride this lip out. He rides on the lip over this thing in this little region. Who knows what's gonna happen? You're gonna be with your board, which is a bad thing, a fiberglass. You're gonna take a vertical drop and all hell's gonna break loose right there. Alrighty, people, this is a great example of how to nail that later drop. Oh, look at that thing. That was a beautiful drop in. Now the wave, obviously, just, oh, God, that's gnarly. I don't know how you guys surf the wedge. Let's see what happens here. Almost looks like a little bit of a late decision. This guy's like, you got it, buddy. See how, see how the wave picks him up? Now, each wave is different. You may not have a wave that kind of projects you up. It's called the wedge for a reason. He's pushing the board down. You want that nose facing down. The wave's obviously going that direction. If he would have kept that board straight, he, he would have gotten so launched. He's not worried about coming over here yet. He's worried about making this drop because he knows he's late. And so he's looking straight down. He knows this thing's about to go vertical on him. So he's putting all his weight to that back leg. Now watch as he pushes back. Your whole goal at this point is to keep that nose from digging in the water. And that's exactly what he's doing right there. I mean, look at that. His front foot is off of the board. His, his arms, everything is up high because what that's going to do is it's going to distribute your, your, his weight to the back foot there, his left foot. And so that's how he makes this drop right here. All his weight is on this back. If not, you can see his board wanted to pearl right there. It wanted to go in. Down here, he has a beautiful bottom turn, but he looks up and sees that behemoth of whatever, death. You know, just dirt, salt water, and death. And he's like, no, I'm not going to go over there. Oh, look at that. This one's a great example of how to pop up super quick and get in early. Up 
and down. Look at that. He, he absolutely makes it look so easy. He starts off looking down the line or at the photographer. Hey, jeez. And then straightforward, right? Because he's concentrated on this part of the wave. What is the wave doing? Look how far underneath the peak of the wave it is. Once again, he's got a little bit of a bigger board. Allows him to take off almost mid-wave on this thing. So he's under the lip. His weight is distributed to the back now. So you can see the board is way safe. I think he realizes that as well. His weight's to the back. If you look at this back leg, this is something important. He's actually using that to steer the board. Put all the weight on this side, it's going to lean this board in. Right here, he starts to straighten up his body, getting ready to make the bottom turn. Look how beautiful that looks right there. Just a screenshot of that. All right, remember how I said you wanna get into the wave early? This is why. <laughs> you don't want that happening to you. You, you really want to be down here more. He should be getting his board down the wave at this point, um, which means he would have already been standing and kind of going in a forward motion. Instead, he's at the top of the lip and he gets launched. Ooh, this is gonna be quick. See how he's all the way back. He's got this back, hands up in the air, the nose is staying out. Maybe he's just waving to the photographer, but I think he's using it for weight distribution. And look at that, he made it all the way down. So that's just being quick and leaning all the way back. And then once you're in the flats, put that weight forward again or else you're gonna slide out and hit the photographer with your surfboard. Okay, this is a good example of when I was saying, if you're gonna paddle for the wave, go. Don't hesitate. He's trying to figure out if he's, uh, maybe if he's gonna go or how he's gonna drop in. But that time waited sucks him up to the very top the board is now exactly where i tell you not to put it do not put that board horizontal so obviously he never really stood a chance right here he's like this is not a good place to be does the wise thing and tries to get out in front of it <laughs> and then just you really want to go feet first and not butt first maybe i'll do a video about how to how to correctly jump off a big wave <laughs> okay now this is a different type of a wave and this is the patent Alex Gray takeoff. Unfortunately, I didn't show him paddling into it. Uh, it's not quite as steep and deep as those, those clips from the wedge. So watch what he does here. Right here, he's got most of his weight to the back, but he's still got a little bit of weight up front just to get him down. And uh, watch what he does here, right there. He's grabbing that water for two reasons. One is to slow him down. He sees it's going to barrel and he wants to be in the right spot. But number two, by, by putting your hand in the water, it's distributing your weight back. Watch the head too. I think I've said this in a lot of these. At the starting, he's looking down. He wants to see what's in front of him. Once he knows he's got the clear on that drop, he turns his attention to where he's going. Or he's looking for me to make sure I get the shot. But I'm guessing he's looking over here because he wants to uh, make this wave. This is a great example of why it's so important to push the board down when you're dropping in. And by a great example, I mean, oh, he really missed out on this one. It's my buddy, Chris Broman, and yeah, he's probably really tired of me running this clip, but it's a great example. So, sorry, Chris, I gotta use this. So as he's getting in this wave, it's not very vertical, right? But you still, when you're getting up, you still wanna push the nose of the board down so you don't slow down and get hung up. And what I mean by that is this water's pushing, it's obviously going up, so it's pushing his board and him up. Now he's pushing all the way up to the top of this wave. So instead of in getting down the face, he's got it horizontal, he's getting held up. So right here, the board's still vertical. The wave's already getting ready to break right where he is. He is getting hung up on the lip. He does a great attempt at making that drop because he was so late. Yeah, just get, get that board vertical early. This could possibly be one of the best examples out of all because we're gonna have a side-by-side -side example. Unfortunately, it's you know two guys going for one wave and it's crowd. Look, we got guys underneath of them, people watching them. Both of them getting up about the same time. This is Chris Wells here. He's under it a little bit, keeping that board down. He's keeping that board down. Right here, you know, one of these guys is gonna probably make it and the other guy's not. His weight is distributed towards the front of the board. His is on that back foot over there. So as you can see, this is why it's important to stay back. Even if it's not a straight vertical wave, that lip is still going to give you problems. 
Now he's just starting to get that weight distributed to the back, but that's gonna be a day late and a dollar short. The nose is now digging, his nose is up in the clear, and down he goes, and Chris makes this weight. You'll see it once again, the weight distribution. One is back and one is all the way forward. Once again, a great demonstration on why your board should be, ooh, goodness, look at that weight. Uh, why your board should be vertical and not horizontal. Well, for starters, see, look how long he's gliding with it. And I think because he's trying to make up his mind on where he wants to go here, he hasn't even looked down yet to see what's going on right in front of him. So as he's taking his time, you can see he's actually getting pushed up higher on that wave. And the board is horizontal. It's not vertical. You want to push the nose down. Now he's finally looking down. Once he looks down at this point, he knows, uh oh, I better lean back. And as he leans back, it's just too late. He does a heck of a job trying to knife this, but it's so late, there's no way to savor this wave. All right, this is Koa Smith showing a great demonstration of weight distribution. Mm, look at that. Sorry about the quality here. It was just a miserable morning. So he's, he's getting ready to pop up here. He is under the lip and he's still a bit under right here. He's, it's hard to tell, but he is looking down at where to go. This guy's like, I gotta get out of the way. This co is a big dude and will run me over. So here he's like, yep, the bottom just dropped out. This thing's, you know, I got about 10 feet of vert in front of me. All his weight is to the back. He's almost, I'm not sure if he's doing this on purpose or not, but he's almost grabbing the lip to, to hold on to, to get all that weight off the nose of the board. I mean, the key is just weight distribution. And another thing he does here is as he's in the air, this may look awkward, but he's actually putting more weight back by doing that. And now once he's landed, he's distributing his eyes over here because he knows he, that's where he's gonna go. So I appreciate this one because it's a side by side showing you two different ways to distribute your weight back on that back foot. Once again, a pretty good day at the wedge. So let's start just from the starting. And as you'll see, there's a ton of guys going for this way, but we're really gonna eyeball this guy and this guy. This guy's like, I am like smacking the way I'm gonna get run over. He's full force now, he has to go because you can't back up. You can't stop at that point. Now, here comes the fun part. Two separate ways of, of using your body weight distribution to help you get down the face. He's straight up, he's vertical. So all his weight is coming to the back. He's leaning a little bit forward with both his arms up. So both these are, are fine. It's just a, a, a different way of doing it. You can use either one. Both of them will help you not dig that nose. So both these were done right. This is a great example of why putting all your weight back is important. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a beast of a wave, people. All right, let's back it up real quick, show you what he's doing right here. Paddling early and hard, he's looking forward. He's not worried about going over here yet. He's worried about what's gonna happen to the wave in front of him. As he's pushing forward, watch his front foot. He just lightly, he just lightly places it down. He knows he's gotta get as far back on this thing as possible. Because every now and then a wave is just gonna, the bottom of the wave is just gonna drop out and that's what he sees, cause he's looking down and he's like, okay, here we go. Uh, as that happens, right there, you see that little chop? He saw that, and that's why all his weight's back, his arms are back, all his weight is up high instead of being forward. Because if you've got any distribution of the weight up front, you're gonna dig your nose when you come down. Look how hard he's pushing on that back foot. This front foot is just kind of holding that board straight. Everything else is leaning back. Uh, as he comes down right there, look how far back all his weight is on this board. That thing digs all the way up to his foot here and a little bit on his back foot. Um, but because all his weight was distributed to the back, he clears that landing. Look at that way. Look how beautiful that is. And until it gets right in here. Not so beautiful anymore. <laughs> How's that face? All right, here's Alex Gray again, showing you using weight distribution to turn the board. He knew he didn't have time to come down the wave and then do a bottom turn into this because he would have been behind the barrel. He's still putting the weight on that back foot. He's 
using his upper body to use that momentum to push him down the line. Even more important, he's got both his feet on this side of the board. Look how close he is to digging that nose. See that? See how he slides that board right down? So he's basically doing like a mid-face bottom turn. If he would have tried to do a bottom turn, he would have been way back in here. This is a really key factor. If you're on a faster beach break kind of a wave with a bigger day, there's a way to cheat around that bottom turn to get up and in because really you want to get as fast down that line as you can. And this is an incredible wave that wouldn't have been made if he would have gone straight and bottom turn. I chose this clip of K because I just wanted to show you one really cool thing. Not that it's a crazy barrel slash closeout, <laughs> but look at his arm swing, right? So as he swings that arm, that's actually weight distributing. He's distributing all of his weight so that the board turns with him. And there's also the, the hand drag. So the hand drag is doing two things. It's slowing him down to get into that barrel. And it's also keeping his weight distributed to the back. But as you can see, as I fa fast forward it here, if he would have tried to do a bottom turn, he would have been down here coming back around instead of already being lined up in that barrel and then getting closed out on. <laughs> this one's similar to Kay's way. He's using his arms. So first he's looking down the way, but then he looks straight down, right? Like I said, look where you're going. As he drops here, he's doing a rail grab. See how he's using this front arm? What that's doing is it's swinging his weight distribution. He's gonna have this front leg kind of leaning on this side and he's going to be holding onto this rail to kind of keep him on this this path of going down the line you see how he's leaning his full body that's weight distribution right because he knows that once again it's too fast to be doing a bottom turn so he's fully distributing all his weight he's even grabbing the wall of the wave now to help bring the nose of the board up into the barrel and he keeps that line now obviously it was a closeout but it's really hard to do and it, maybe it looks simple to a lot of you out there but that's that that is beautiful way to stall keep the nose from digging and get down the line as fast as you can okay i want to end with this one because it proves everything i've been saying wrong <laughs> it's just a fluke right here i mean tommy Cantrell at the wedge he knows this spot. The board, everything is wrong. The board is uh, horizontal, not vertical. He's not looking down, he's looking sideways. He's doing everything that we've seen in this video wrong. <laughs> so as he comes down here, he's really, he's distributing the weight forward too late. He's, he, 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 he's I don't even know what to say. And then he goes vertical. Uh, instead of distributing his weight to the back of the board, he's not distributing his weight on the board at all. <laughs> he actually got airborne here, which is a good thing because surfboards float. So the surfboard, while it's digging the nose, it floated right back up because he doesn't have any weight on it. You could try this, I suppose. It's, it's not going to end real well. As he comes back down, he lands on the front of the board. He's almost got a little hang five going here, which by all means, he should have he should have nosedive at this point. He should have pearled that nose. I don't know why it didn't. You can see it's starting to there. He's not even looking at it. He's, he's still thinking, I got a chance for this barrel, right? And finally gets, I mean, look how long he's riding on the nose for. Absolutely crazy. I mean, his, his weight is getting back, but he's defying all logic right there. <laughs> yeah, it ends up costing him. You know, he, he, he can't get around the corner, but... That is a heck of a wave to end on. Getting airborne, landing on a nose, and riding it out on the nose, proving everything I've said to this point wrong. Thanks, Tommy.